everyone, my name is Leslie Onstead and we're going to do a 15 by 30 cradle board. My materials list is listed in the front of the video. I have a 15 by 30 cradle board that I have prepped and painted with black paint and I'm applying a it's a stucco patch you can buy already pre-mixed uh, by the gallon at Home Depot and I'm applying it around different random edges of my cradle board with a popsicle stick. The uh, texture is very industrial looking and um, I just think it'll add an extra component to my piece. I decided um, that I was going to This next step, I'm taking some um, black golden, is the manufacturer, uh, carbon black paint. And I just got one of those cheapy throwaway brushes. And I'm using what they call a stippling motion, just kind of pouncing up and down, making sure I'm getting those inside edges. I ended up letting it dry and came back and did a second coat, which I did not tape. But um, after it dried, there were little bits that were there that needed a little bit of extra coverage. So next up, it's time to put some. Now I'm applying some clear resin over the top of the area that does not have the stucco patch. And I'm going to warm it and spread it around real thin so we can get it nicely lubricated. Using my um, little silicone tool, they use these tools for uh, applying hair color. I'm using my heat gun and the tool to just spread this clear around nice and even so it's smooth.
making sure I'm getting in all those little crevices up against my um, texture that I laid randomly around my board. Now that we're fully lubricated, it's time to begin adding the colors. First I felt a little bit timid. I was laying the spiced ginger down and going, oh my gosh, am I doing the right thing? Wasn't sure which direction I was going. And then I realized I hadn't used my stone coat. So here I have a little bit of stone coat mixed in my clear. And I'm going to put it around each of just those two ends, not too much in the center. take my little tool and kind of just swipe it randomly up in there. Now remember the stone coat is only a tint. It's, it looks like a charcoal gray actually in uh, my little cup. Less is more when it comes to the stone coat recipe. This next color is that custom color I mixed with the spice ginger and the interference gold and it looked like I changed my mind. <laughs> I almost put it down. Here's that spice ginger. I'm getting a little bit more confident about which direction I'm going to go now. This next color is the red plum. It's the deepest red from resin art. Now I'm using that uh, lighter spice ginger golden yellow color I custom mixed uh, with some pretty in pink. Earlier I said it was 50-50 but really it was a full scoop of the interference gold with maybe a third of a scoop of the spice ginger. That stuff's pretty strong. I'm warming my resin slightly so it'll move. Next I'm adding just a little streak of the stone coat in between each one of those colors is my little insurance policy that I'm going to get some special effects because I'm going to swipe the spice ginger over the red plum, over the golden yellow, and ultimately over the pretty in pink. I'm using Yupo paper that I have cut up and I reuse. I wipe down with alcohol when I'm done so I can keep reusing my Yupo paper over and over again in all my projects. One thing about when you're heating your resin for swiping, you want it to move, but you don't want it so hot it's sloppy. Wiping that excess off my paper on the edge. And here we're applying some heat. This uh, accent, this uh, kind of creates the effects between the heat and the stone coat and the resin. Just a little bit of heat will help 
to create those effects with the stone coat. And I'm just kind of blowing the color just lightly where I think it might look more shapely. At this point I haven't really made up my mind but I think it's time to try the transparent red, that red raspberry color I just made. Yeah, I've been watching people use transparents and opaques and you want to give your eyes a place to rest and by putting this transparent red on top of anything gold or orange the the gold just pops right through making that red even look redder in person. It looks like a beautiful transparent metallic red. There's a close-up but it's probably hard to see in the camera at this point. So now it's time to try to give a little swipe and see what happens when I swipe with my transparent over the rest of those colors. Warming it slightly so it moves a little bit easier. But my heart just jumped when I saw how pretty that red was going over the top of all those golds and pinks. And the red plum, of course. This part of the video I decided not to speed up or break up so you could see the actual painting in real time. How long it took for those cells to start to form in that first section that I swiped. So now it's time to do the other end. First color I put down was that pretty in pink. Then that light golden custom yellow color that we made. This is that red plum. and the spice ginger. Now I'm going to take some of the stone coat and kind of do a line in between each color. You get the effects when the color goes over the stone coat. And I knew that I had put the stone coat on the furthest edges. I wanted a little guarantee that there would be something in between if they floated over the top of one another. I'm now taking kind of the rest of the stone coat because I did the one end. Now I'm going to add um, and kind of spread that on the other end. Making sure to warm my resin and popping my bubbles before I spread it around. And just working that little bit of stone coat black all the way kind of through the rest of the piece. Just random. There's no rhyme or reason. It's just you just need a little bit. And now we're going to swipe straight over the top of those colors. I'm trying to keep my black stucco patch clean. It's going to be a challenge because I want to be right up next to it but not necessarily go over into the actual 
stucco patch itself. I love that transparent red raspberry so much. We're going to add it again as an effect in this second swipe. First I'm adding just a tiny bit of that bright gold, that yellow color, because the red on top of that is absolutely stunning. It just changes that gold to a whole nother color. And really that's our yellow that we made. There is no gold in this piece. There's so much um, gold colors going on here. There was really no need to actually mix up any actual gold gold paint. I'm sure you all agree with that. Felt a little disjointed in the center where you had one section that went to the left and one section went to the right. So I felt if I added some transparent there and just kind of moved it around slightly, it would connect the uh, those two areas, make them look like they belong together a little bit more. Now we're going to swipe that transparent red over the top of all those other colors into the area that has that stone coat black. This is where you really get your beautiful cells and lacing. I'm swiping off a little bit of the excess color on the card from that from that Yupo card. You can scrape it right back on the canvas and use it. It's uh, less waste and um, all I'm going to do is wipe off the Yupo paper with alcohol, so I don't want to want to throw it away if I don't have to. Apologize right now for that hot spot. I ended up moving it a little bit later, but I, I now am noticing that hot spot with the light right in that area. I'm trying to blow the heat over. Just touching up here and there where I feel like we needed a little extra color on that end. There's some pretty in pink uh, right next to that yellow. I know you can't see it through the hot spot right now, but the uh, the swipe kind of skipped over on that end that had happened. So instead of trying to re-swipe, I'm just kind of moving the color around. There we go, I moved the camera for you. I mean the light for you. So now the dilemma was, what do I do on the other side? Originally, I had I had wanted uh, to go crazy with colors. No surprise, you're talking about me, of course, because I love color. But I originally was going to do turquoise to um, the gold, but I just really decided to stay in the same side of the color wheel. All the warms, reds, oranges, and, and yellows. Of course, red will go into a pink, so that's as far off the color wheel as I went to uh, in the color range. Those lines of stone coat in between each color. Again, that's just that little guarantee that I know for a fact that those colors are going to be swiped on top of the stone coat for effects. It's not going to be missed somehow.
Now it's time for that beautiful red raspberry tint. My new favorite color. And then in this swipe, I'm trying to get right up next to the design in my stucco patch that I created. So I'm kind of swishing my paper in and out of those little curves best I can. Just felt like I needed to move that transparent red into those other colors just a little bit more and open up that center. So again, trying to make it look like all four sections belong to the same piece, color-wise anyway. Some more pretty and pink. And this is the red plum. Incidentally, this piece took 10 ounces of resin and I used every drop of it, even the little bit of clear that I put over my stucco patches at the end, which I know you haven't seen yet. So 10 ounces ended up being perfect for uh, lubricating the base and mixing all of my colors. I didn't waste a drop on this one. Now I'm just adding all the excess, everything I'm scraping everything out of my, um, speaking of using it all, I'm scraping everything out of my cups at this point. And now for the transparent red, whatever I've got left, I want to make the most of this. That red, I think I'm going to call it red raspberry. Why not? It isn't a pure, pure red. It's got just a hint of, um, I wouldn't really call it a pink, but uh, you know how raspberry might have a little bit of a pinky tint to it, I guess. I didn't just want full on in your face red red. But it sure looks like a bright deep red on top of those golds. I love how it turned out. And yet on the pinks, it'll accentuate the pink up underneath. I just think it's a very versatile color. time to do some final swipes and as I get myself cornered it's harder and harder to figure out which direction to pull them in. I just kind of wanted to make sure I get into all those crevices of my patch like I did on the other end. Stucco patch. 
hey, we don't have a resi crete in this country. That stuff comes from the United Kingdom. So I went searching for what can I do to get a concrete look that will work with resin without having to order something from overseas. And this stucco patch from um, Home Depot, I'll put the brand in my description, worked beautifully. I did do a test, by the way, on top of a tile that had already been painted to resin to see if this um, texture with the stucco could be used to fix a canvas that I've already painted, but maybe I want to add some interesting effects to on top of it. And it did work. It worked beautifully on top of the resin. I recommend you kind of rough up the resin a little bit, sand it slightly where you're going to put it. I did not, and it stuck fine. But just for a little insurance, you always want to kind of sand your area where you plan on putting a, a second layer. Of course, now it's just time for doing all the touch-up. Looking for any areas maybe I missed. Maybe some colors that look like they need to be blown around a little bit to add some more interest. You guys can speed past this part, but this is the actual the real time as the cells are starting to form and um, I'm getting ready to get the clear resin and touch up this uh, black stucco with a little bit of clear on top, what little bit I have left. So here we are adding a little bit of resin. I'm first starting with my popsicle stick but I end up using my hand because I can get my fingers kind of down in the crevices where the popsicle sticks just a little bit too flat. So I kind of sped up this part. I didn't, you didn't really see, need to see me rubbing in clear, but I wanted you to get the point that I kind of went through the rest of this and just took what little bit of clear I had left and kind of spread it around. Hi guys, so um, I know the rest of this was a voiceover. I just wanted to get into the headspace. Uh, what I used that was this transparent red is a new powdered transparent color that will be in the resin art line. I have a beautiful bright light tur turquoise blue and then I am in love with this red raspberry. When you put a transparent red on top of a gold then you get that really brilliant metallic red Christmas red that we're looking for. Um, and I was kept seeing red and black and gold but couldn't figure out how to get the red to really really show up on the black. So the colors that I used and they will be in the description was the uh, not sure where my containers are now was the pretty in pink uh, spice ginger red plum the new transparent red, it'll be raspberry something. I don't know if it's wild red raspberry, red raspberry might be, I know it's a little bit bland of a name, but I really had a raspberry color in mind when I mixed it. Um, 
And I did make a second shade of the Spice Ginger by adding equal portions of the Interference Gold to make that, that beautiful goldenrod yellow that you see in there. Um, that, of course, that red is stunning on top of. I love what's happening here. So I'm gonna get my phone. Hopefully I can get a nice sparkly close-up for you guys for the end of the video here. And I'll see you in the flip side. Be kind to each other, guys. It's, we're so fortunate to be able to craft and paint to whatever degree we can and express ourselves in. I just feel fortunate that I'm able to share with you. Share this with you. Thank you so much and have a good day. Bye-bye. So this is that amazing dark center here where that transparent red went over the top of the gold and the spiced ginger. That's why that, that is transparent what's going on top and we still can see the sparkle through it. This is that pretty in pink. I'm loving the lacing. I applied a little bit of the stone coat black mixed with some clear resins and I put it on the edges so I could get these beautiful sparkly effects that you see. It's my first experiment at playing with that stucco paste. It has kind of a really nice, uh, I don't know, uh, feel like you're digging through the rocks of a cave or something, or it's, I don't know, it has an industrial feel. The, the look of this, uh, this stucco, and it's a stucco patch, that's what this stuff is. And I just put it down and then I stenciled it with black paint and that's a little bit of resin on top right now that's drying, that clear resin. This is the other end where we're going over here. These colors just turned out magnificent. Right here, we're coming up on where the transparent red and that red plum you can see in there. I love the streaks of the transparent red going over the top of everything. Anyway, this is my piece for Tuesday, December 25th, 2018. I hope you have enjoyed. This is a 15 by 30 wooden cradle board and it is available if somebody is interested. You have a good day, sweethearts. Bye.